As we have said before, ducts can be either reinforced or unreinforced. So for ease of illustration, I will start by the small tables which are the unreinforced duct sheet wall thickness. After we have obtained the pressure classification of the duct, this is the entrance or the entry key for the following table. The following table will be used to specify the sheet metal thickness of the duct. In order to enter this table, you need two inputs. Input number one, which is the duct dimension, and input number two, which is the pressure classification. Duct dimension is representing the row which you will intersect or cross with the vertical column representing the pressure classification. So, what duct dimension I have since my duct have two dimensions, the width and the height. And usually the width is higher or bigger than the height. For example, if I have a duct of 70 cm width by 30 cm height, which dimension should I take? In this case, you always take the largest dimension. So I will take the 70 cm dimension and use it as the input in the first column in this table of the unreinforced duct wall thickness, which is table 2-47M in Smacna duct construction. My entry point will be the 70 cm, so I will check these dimensions 200 and under, 230 to 250, 251 to 300, 301 to 350, up until I reach the 700 here. I have the 651 up to 700. So this is my entry point as the row. I need to cross this or intersect this with the pressure classification of my duct. So as we have said before, the duct pressure classification is dependent upon the ESP of the fan for your system. For example, let's go to the previous slide. If I have a fan of 1.5 external static pressure, so this fan will give me a duct pressure classification of 2 inch because 1.5 is between 1 and 2 operating pressure. So my second input, which is 2 inch water gauge duct pressure classification, represented by these columns here. So the first column is for the duct dimension and the remainder of the columns are for the pressure classifications. Duct dimension represents the row. You need to intersect the row with a column. The column represents the duct pressure classification so that you can get the duct sheet metal thickness for your duct. As we have said, for the duct example of 70 cm here, I will go horizontally up until I reach the 500 Pascal, which is the operating or the duct pressure classification. So now I have the sheet metal thickness of my duct, which is 1.31 mm. Now, since I have this specified, let's read the note given under this table. This table gives the minimum duct wall thickness in mm to use of flat joint systems. Plain S and hemmed C connectors are limited to 500 Pascal maximum. Slip and drives must not be less than two gauges higher than the duct wall not below 0.7 mm double s slip must be 0.7 mm for ducts 762 mm wider or less and 0.85 mm or greater width this means simply that this table gives you the minimum duct sheet metal thickness and that the flat, the joints and the seams should be two gauges upper than the duct in the thickness you can see the small table below representing the duct sheet metal thickness versus the minimum flat slip and drive thickness. This will give you a comparison between the duct sheet metal thickness and the equivalent thickness of the flat drive or the joint and the seam of the duct. So if you have a duct of a thickness varying from 0.55 to 0.85, you will use a joint thickness of 0.7, which is higher than this duct. If you have a duct of thickness of 1 mm you will use a joint thickness of 0.85 mm if you have a duct thickness of 1.31 mm you will use the joint of a thickness of 1 mm and so on in the same year 1.61 duct thickness you will use 1.31 minimum flat slip and drive thickness so this is how to specify the thickness of the unreinforced duct wall thickness